Welcome, and thank you for joining for another whiskey review. Today, we're going to take a look at the Ardbeg 25-year-old, 46% ABV. Comes in a sexy container and sexy bottle. Has the Tesla flip-top head on this thing, Dustin. Look at this bad boy. Heavy, beefy, metal, black. Yep, Every, and the bottle, metallic. This is a heavy... Heavy, heavy cork. cork. And this is all metal right here, guys, too. Nice bottle. Everything about this thing is just nice. It's not quite the cork that, say, a McAllen Rare Cask or Glen Morangy uh, Signet is, but you're kind of in that same it's, ilk. It's comparable to Signet. It, it, it's comparable. Not as quite as heavy as those, uh, but, uh, you know, it's pretty close. Yeah. And this cool bottle, bottle, though. Yep, yeah, and this bottle has been abused and uh, misused, I'd say, at this point, but what are you going to do? <clears throat> Whiskey is for drinking. Right? Yes. Dustin, not an easy bottle to get for us. No, I've had this bottle literally torn out of my hands. Mm -hmm. and uh, Unfairly, I should say. Quite unfairly. I, I was at a store. They had it. I knew they had it. I went there and I said, hey, you've got this bottle. I want it. And after 40 minutes of uh, searching, they finally found the bottle. Mm -hmm. I've got it in my hands. And it won't ring up at the register because apparently in Ohio... The state has to put the whiskey into the system so they can sell it. We have a terrible system. It's a ridiculous system. Terrible system. And it turns out that somebody had put their name on it, so I'm told, before I got there. Yeah. Uh, the uh, guy who runs the liquor store is cousin or somebody like exactly. that. Exactly. But and you well, we, you eventually got one. We've been both been trying to get them. Yeah. I drove an hour to get it on a work night and drove an hour home. Yeah. Well worth it. But there's a will, there's a way. We love these art bags. We love Island whiskeys in general, as you guys know. So... We've been waiting a long time to uh, get our hands on this particular one, so we're glad we got our hands on the the big 25 from our bag, 750 ml. Dustin, let's get into it. Tell the folks what to expect if they can get their hands on a bottle that I believe what 6,500 of them. Yeah, it's not a it's not a rare bottle per se, but our bag's popularity has unfortunately driven this thing way up in price and has people chasing it and also i've got a feeling there's a lot of these sitting in people's collections as uh investments unfortunately yes beautiful um natural color has always been very light for a 25 year old whiskey very, yeah very but light. you know as i was go i mean it's still got more color than like a 10 year or something like that would have yeah but sure we compared to you know it is comparable color for 25 lagging 25 though that's a quite a no, well, that's, a, that's a sherry bomb yeah for sure <laughs> all right so i will say this right off the bat and I said this um, uh, the first time I had this. This is probably the smokiest, not peatiest, smokiest Ardbeg I've ever smelled. Smokiest, oakiest, wood burn, mm. pond fire. Bonfire. Ardbeg has never been smokier. No. So for the, those of you who continue this ridiculous idea that smoke and peat and all this stuff dies on old whiskey. It does not. I have no I, I Again, I've never had an Ardbeg with this much smoke in it ever. Yeah. Ever. People, you are drinking way too many 14 to 18 year old whiskeys and not grasping. You just got a bad whiskey. Yep. That's the issue, not the age. <clears throat> yeah, I tell you what. So some I've had some Islas that were 25 years old. Again, the Fro 25, the Ardbeg 25, the Talisker 30, the Talisker 35, Lagavulin 25. Those are probably five of the 10 smokiest whiskeys I have ever tried in my life. Well, we just had a Kalila 25 today, Mike. Yeah. 43 percent. Super smoky. Super nice smoke. Anyway, this one, man, bang. Bang, huge bonfire smoke. The, the normal um, vanilla, lemon, and lime that I get from Ardbeg's, super way in the background on this it's one. It's hidden by waves and waves of oak and smoke. Mm -hmm. And it's, I mean, it's the most beautiful oak I have ever had on an Ardbeg, Mike. And you know, at first I didn't see it, but now, now I really do get it. Once those fruits do tend to come up, it is a solid lime. Not even lemon, it is a lime. This thing needs to go in a Corona. No, it doesn't. It needs to go right here in my whiskey collection. I actually get lemon pie a little bit on the nose myself. Really? Once I get in there, yeah. Mm. Now, you said uh, lemon meringue pie, and I completely agree with that statement. Well, and you know, I actually made the note is that I actually start to pick up some key lime pie. Oh, as yes, it, Once it's yes. been open for a while and I'm it's sorry. in the glass. Yeah, you said key lime pie. That's, that's Yeah, yeah, yeah. That slightly that's different uh, key lime thing. It's not coming out just yet, but I guarantee you by the time we're done with this review, I'll pick it up. Hey, um, as you know, Dustin, um, we just got back from Florida. Mm -hmm. Had a little vacation finally here in 2021. I got to get away finally. Yeah. Went to a place where America has always been America. That's Florida, South Florida. Got a buddy there, and uh, he's got a boat. So uh, when, when like the fifth day going out, um, after we were terribly dehydrated, fell off the boat, coming in the marina. 
And I've spilled those barnacles into that growth that you get on the poles of a marina, that mossy growth. Mm -hmm. It will cut you, by the way, if you fall off a boat and try to climb a pole. Um, yep. Oh, just, yeah, well. just a little bit of that. Yeah. On this as well. It's very coastal. Very coastal. And yeah, it's coastal. It's very clean. It's refined. I mean, the age here is definitely showing itself as a very refined, sophisticated. Mm. Uh, whiskey that wood smoke I, as I've always told you once you get to 25 years which is one of my favorite age statements yeah for price compared to value man that 25 year old old age you get right into some serious wood smoke that I'm usually never disappointed with regardless of ABV regardless mm -hmm. of ABV on 25 year old whiskey especially on the nose no and this exactly and this is no exception Dustin. Mm -hmm. this is a beautiful beautiful nosing whiskey what do you oh what do you pick on the palate my friend so it is oily it is tar it is smoke it is wood i do get this sort of soapy element that we've talked about mike that it's distracting me a little bit i'm gonna tell you right now though coming kind of coming back to this whiskey up front i think mm. i think the, the soap kind of picks up the more it's in the glass right now it's actually a really nice place where mm. the tar the smoke the oak are coming through sweetness is definitely here but it's it's not fruity enough for me to think hard bag initially. What are you getting? Tar for sure. Lime, heavy lime, heavy, heavy smoke. Almost like you're in a sauna. Like smoke is all around you. Smoke is completely enveloping everything that's going on here. Um, a little bit of vanilla, pie crust, twinge of pie, pie, pie crust. Mm -hmm. Almost like something like like a custard, like creme brulee. A little bit of that. Um, the only fruit I'm picking up is just straight acidic citrus. Yeah. Well, you yeah. said lime. Yeah. Well, you know what? And you write the limes there with the char. It's, it's tar, lime, and then soap for me. You know, you keep saying the soap. Boom, boom, boom. And I saw the soap note in the box too. I, I, I wouldn't say soap is as much as just a, a dingy waxiness. Now, when you were a kid, did you ever have to bite the bar of soap for cussing? No, I, I grew up in a Catholic school. And I knew, I, what I knew was better to ask for forgiveness than permission. Mm -hmm. I just never tried to swim upstream. Yeah. My parents were serious. And using a swear word just seemed like suicide to me. Yeah. So, I never, so no bars of soap. Yeah. I uh, unfortunately did have to do that a few times. So maybe I've got a little more familiarity with what that actually tastes like than I, mm -hmm. than I would prefer. But um, dove soap is definitely something I have bit into. And this is, you're picking on a little bit of dove soap in here? It's not so much dove, but it's, it's like, it's... It's that soapy note, with, but it's more like Irish Springs. Uh, smells on the taste. Again, why I wouldn't go as far as to say soap, but there is something dense, waxy, thick to it, uh, I would say. Maybe it's part of the smoke note, too. Remember I said before it was a bonfire smoke? Usually I don't say bonfire smoke yeah. with Ardbeg, but the smoke almost has a heft to it. I think, to me, the, the, it's, it's the, the tar. It's the tar and soap. Yeah, and the kind of, they they come together. The smoke is separate. The bonfire smoke is separate. The wood smoke. Oh, Maybe it's clean tar. Maybe that's, that's the stickiness you're picking up. <laughs> it, it's a slight bitterness. That's the thing. Is it's a soapy bitterness. And it's it's the one note in this thing that I just do not love about this whiskey. <clears throat> yeah. Um, Everything else about this whiskey, I'm in love with, Mike. Yeah, we compared it to the other, you know, Arbeck 20-somethings uh, recently. We'll be posting that review soon. Um, but, uh, yeah, we th assumed this would be the, the, the runaway winner. But, yeah, there was a, a, one or two off things with this 25 comparatively um, to say that say the 22 that yeah. I was a little surprised yeah. um, at first. But um, it doesn't take – it doesn't mean this isn't a fantastic whiskey. It just means maybe there are a couple elements in this thing that just aren't yeah. necessarily for me. Yeah, and it's such a – I mean, this is so unique. It's Ardbeg, but it is – I have yet to have an Ardbeg that's anything like this whiskey. I agree. The smoke level in this, and, and I know Ardbeg's a smoky whiskey in general, the smoke level in this is just, it's it's 12 for Ardbeg. Yeah. I can't believe how smoky this is. It's not even Spinal Tap going to 11. No, this it, went it to is 12. super smoky. It's actually, you know, it's, it's legitimately stronger. All right, Dustin, I have failed us and not put water in here sooner. You know, these 46 percenters never make you want to, and great whiskey makes you not want to jump to the water. But... We'll you guys, we'll put a few drops of water. See if it changes Perfect. anything. Yep. Usually that makes a whiskey more smoky to me. I can't imagine that's even possible at this point. Because this might be the smokiest 46% ABV whiskey yeah. I've ever had. And actually, to be honest with you, no, the smoke has come down and the pie crust has come, come out beautifully here. 
a little more of that lemon lime. So now I'm really truly getting that lemon pie. Mm -hmm. The lemon pie is here. Lemon ring pie. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, it, it has brought up the sweetness with a couple drops of water. Yeah, now I'm still getting tar. Still getting smoke. You know, it's, we think bon, we've said bonfire a bunch, but now this is like a tar fire. Just sticky, hot. Yeah. The, the, you know, it's the 4th of July here in Columbus. If you, it, this whiskey tastes like it feels outside. And the rest of the world. Yeah, yeah it's 4th of July everywhere. Well, I guess Australia actually has left there on the 5th. <clears throat> mm. Beautiful whiskey. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful whiskey. nose. I mean, just. I just want to keep going back to this. And I do think water actually does help the nose on this one. Something I don't say a lot on these 46 percenters, but it really does help. This is the oldest old distillate Ardbeg I've ever tried. Didn't we uh, in Chicago have a 27 or 28 year old? I stand corrected. This is the second oldest old distillate Ardbeg we've tried. It's the oldest official bottling we've had. Yes. That was a Taiwanese bottle, but yes, you're right. Independent, yeah. That was beautiful. Oh, that was. That was not as smoky as this either. No, this is the smokiest art big ever. That I am fairly confident with. All right, so Dustin, my friend, we're at as far as the whiskey score on this one. We did just go back in without uh, with the water, and the uh, the soap actually went down a little bit. Vanilla mm -hmm. came up a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Pie crust is here. Mm -hmm. I actually prefer it with the water. It definitely has risen up, become a more palatable whiskey. So for me. Shockingly, Mike, I will recommend one drop of water to this one. It became sweeter for sure. Yeah, I think we did three. I probably would just do one. Yeah, just just tap. Play with it. Play with it. Yeah. Um, score, Mike. I'm going to go 90 on this one. Uh, it's a score I gave it when I first had it, and I'm going to stick at a 90, which for an $800 bottle is a little low. Yep. But I don't think this quite reaches that 91, and I really think a little bit more oiliness, a little viscosity, a little proof probably could have saved it. Yeah, I, I am maxed out at 90 on this one. Mm -hmm. um, I'm right there with you as soon as you said that. I was, I was teetering between 89 and 90. Um, I think it's very, very good whiskey. Uh, but like with most Ardbegs that I've ever tried, I've never had an Ardbeg reach the apex that I have of, say, a Lagavulin or a Kalila or even, even like some top-notch Lafroix that I've had, like the old Lafroix 30. Yeah. You know, I, I've never been... I, even with Isla whiskeys, and we've tried a bunch. Yeah. I would not rank any Ardbeg in my top 10 Isla whiskeys that I've ever had. And you probably would be in the same boat. The problem, though, is Ardbeg shut down for a stretch. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of like this. And also, like, in the stretch of, like, what would be the sweet spot right now for us oh, to be buying whiskey? Yes. They don't exist. Like, basically, the between, like, you know... 25 and 30. 25 and 30, yeah, it doesn't exist right now for the most part. They're extremely rare. And if this indeed is like the 21, 22, and 23, where it's a one of those um, Chevis buybacks, mm -hmm. it probably wasn't you know their best effort, their best cast, things of that nature. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean? It was while they were shut down. They weren't producing a lot of whiskey, so they had very limited stock to sell in the first place. So you've got that issue. Mm -hmm. On top of that, Mike, we've the prices on Ardbeg. Ardbeg is the premium Isla distillery when it yeah. comes to secondary market prices. It's the McCallum of Isla. Yeah. And so... It's steep. Yeah. I mean, you want some of those single barrels that they're putting out? $1,500, $2,000. Easily. Easily. And we're, we're talking like 12-year-old, 13-year-old whiskeys. And you were lucky to get this at 900 850 850 But still, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Everyone I've talked to in the States has been paying close to 1000 for these. And if you're overseas and you didn't get it right away... Those secondary prices are just crazy. I paid less for every Kalila 30 and 35 I have. Yeah, all those, way better whiskey. And those are way better whiskeys. Way better. Cast strength, higher ABV. But I mean, it's still a good whiskey. I mean, I don't want to beat it up too much. It's what I expected. I expected Ardbeg to be overpriced, and I expected it under-delivered under yeah. to some degree. Well, you know, and I, I'll be honest, Mike. When I bought the bottle, my thought was, I'm going to pay $400, $400 whiskey. It's $400 whiskey. I think it's $400 whiskey. Mm -hmm. It's a $200 box. And then... Um, Ardbeg. And then there's a $250 radiate tax I had to pay on top of that. Because of our big. Yeah. Here's the real question. I know this isn't laggable in 25. It ain't. No. Um, is it Lafroy 25? Hell no. No. I'd rather Lafroy 25 in this. Blows it away. Yeah, that's a $500 bottle all day. I've got yeah. eight of them for under 500 bucks. Now these days, they're honest. Unfortunately, they are. They're going up. I'm seeing them 650 750 in the States. Yeah, but not this price. Nope. This is still $100 more. Still a super cool bottle in box, though. It is an incredible display piece, and I'm not gonna lie, 
I might just put Ardbeg 10 in this bottle once it's done. Just to have it. Because I'm not getting rid of this box. No. That thing is just way too cool. Way too cool. Yeah, you don't throw this away. Yeah, that is awesome. It's a beauty. There's even, like, I've even got the outer, like, cardboard boxes if I ever wanted to do we something. We even have some nice, um... Check the inside. Yeah, felt, like, uh, material. Like, to make it smooth. Yeah, it's the same thing. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it, it is a quality box. Beautiful box. Nice jeweler snap thing going on there. Yeah. Everything about it is nice. And mediocre whiskey. Well, not mediocre. Not mediocre, but... Not Truthfully, this is exceptional whiskey. It's a 90. It's a 90. It's a 90. It's an exceptional whiskey. It's just when you put these prices, the hype, the rarity around something, you mm -hmm. expect better, and it doesn't deliver. Agreed. That's where we're at. Our big 25. I know you're going to have an opinion. Let us know what it is in the comment section. Until next time, Dustin, what are the folks? Happy drinking. We'll see you then.